Welcome to this Tradey Tour Dispute video. There are six videos in this series, and at the end of the series, there'll be a webinar where we'll answer your questions related to this topic. In this video, we'll look at the process if QBCC receives a complaint about defective building work after the work is completed. Once the communication has broken down between homeowner and builder, it's not uncommon for reluctance by the licensee to return to resolve the issue or allege defective building work resulting in the lodgement of a complaint with the QBCC. So what happens next? QBCC is able to direct rectification of defective or incomplete building work by a person and or company responsible for carrying out that building work. We require the homeowner to give you written notice of every defective or unfinished item, for example by email or letter, and the notice must give a time frame, for example 14 days, for you to rectify the items. On receipt of the complaint form, we'll register the dispute and assign the case to an assessment officer who will undertake the review of the file. A complaint case file will generally follow the same basic six step process. You will see there are several opportunities for the matter to be resolved well before a QBCC site inspection. Initial contact. At first there will be an initial contact where the assessment officer will contact you and the homeowner to discuss and assess the issues surrounding the complaint. Our aim is to quickly facilitate an acceptable agreement between both parties. Access. If the items cannot be resolved over the phone and there is still alleged defective work, the homeowner will be asked to allow you to return to site and give you reasonable access to inspect and assess the items of complaint. The QBCC considers reasonable access to be a time agreed to by you and the owner during normal working hours for full consecutive days if required, provided you have given the owner a minimum of 48 hours notice. The QBCC strongly encourages you to attend the site inspection to discuss the alleged defective works. If the evidence in the complaint clearly identifies the defect and the licensee indicates a willingness to rectify, the QBCC may request the defect to be rectified before a site inspection occurs. Sometimes property owners decide they don't want to allow you to return to their property to inspect and or fix the work. If this occurs, ensure you record all denied requests for access, as refusing to give you reasonable access can limit the QBCC's involvement. If the owner has denied you access to rectify alleged defective works, remember, all interactions including requests for access should be in writing and make multiple requests for access even if the owner ignores your request. Meet the homeowner to resolve items. If there is alleged defective work, you should meet the homeowner on site to review each item and decide a plan for the repair of any agreed items. Repair. All agreed repairs are then carried out and any agreed contractual items are addressed at this time. QBCC Site Inspection If there are any defective work items which cannot be resolved, a specialist QBCC building inspector is then assigned to the case and will contact you and the homeowner and again try to facilitate an outcome. If this is unsuccessful, the QBCC building inspector may undertake a site inspection. When conducting an inspection, the QBCC building inspector will carry out a visual inspection only. This will involve visually observing each complaint item. Invasive investigations are not undertaken by the QBCC to determine the cause of an alleged defect. An example of an invasive investigation is cutting a hole in a wall to look at damage behind the wall. The inspection is also not intended to be a complete inspection of the whole building or dwelling. At the site inspection, the building inspector will inspect the items of complaint and investigate the relevant information, assess your responsibility for any defective work identified, and decide what subsequent action is required. In some cases, a decision may not be finalised at the inspection. In this instance, we will contact you as soon as possible after the meeting date. Direction to rectify or complete. QBCC will exercise discretion when issuing a direction to rectify. All relevant circumstances will be considered before this action is taken. The direction to rectify will itemise in broad terms the defective work to be addressed. 
It's your responsibility to determine an appropriate resolution that complies with good building practice and satisfies the direction issued. Reasonable access is required for you and or your subcontractors to perform the rectification of works. The QBCC strongly encourages you to attend a site inspection to discuss the alleged defective works. If the evidence in the complaint clearly identifies the defect and the licensee indicates a willingness to rectify, the QBCC may request the defect to be rectified before a site inspection occurs, if a complaint is submitted. Assessment. Access. Owner and contractor meet to resolve items. Repairs. Inspection. Resolution. If you fail to comply with a QBCC direction within the time specified, it may mean it will appear on your public record marked as not complied and visible by your current and future clients for a period of five years. In the next video, we'll talk about reviewing the QBCC's direction, site access, and the QBCC inspection process.